Hello everyone, I hope you're doing great. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can analyze Likert scale items in relation to the other variables in a questionnaire in light of a conceptual or research framework, like this case here. So you can see that uh, we have a research framework that consists of some independent variables, it is the IV and the dependent variable. Okay, so we want to see whether or not there are any differences or let's say effects of the following demographic or social demographic variables like gender, age, grades, motivation, etc., or attendance on readjustment or academic adjustment. So for the adjustment uh, variable, it is represented by an adopted Likert scale, a study that was taken from this reference. If we go back to spaces, we are going to find that gender is a dichotomous variable that consists of two groups, male and female respondents. We want to see whether or not there is any statistically significant difference between male and female students with regard to their adjustment to college, especially during the first years. Uh, because it has been observed that female students keep attending uh, university classes more than let's say uh, male students and maybe because the they are adjusted more or less maybe than female male students so we want to test this relationship in terms of a Likert scale that consists of 17 items here so we need to test we can either combine or sum the scale or the scores of the whole Likert scale or we can just analyze item by item so like I want to see whether uh, male or female respondents feel that they said that lately I have been feeling tense or nervous like in terms of uh, nervousness who may be feeling tense or nervous a uh, male or female students what do you think so this is what I want to test for instance or I keep up to date with my academic duties like it has been known that maybe female students pay attention to details and they like to keep up to date with their academic duties we want to test this so uh, without further ado so we don't need to test any normality or anything here or reliability we have 100 respondents more than 100 respondents which is good so let's go back to or let's go directly to the analysis so I'm going to go to analyze and then I'm going to go to compare means and go for means so here in the independent list I will put gender and in the uh, dependent list, I'm going to select the Likert scale items that I would like to test. In this case, I want to test all the item or the items at once. So I'm just going to move them here for options. Uh, I see what I want. So I want the mean, the number of cases and standard deviation. Maybe I want to see some other items like sconis and kurtosis in, in case I want to test normality, etc. So these are all the options that I can have. So I can take the sum, maybe the median, in case I want to go for non-parametric tests. That's it. So once we do this, we are going to uh, do what? So once we do this, we are going to run the analysis to see what will happen. I can even include a NOVA table it etc if I want or tests for linearity so I can include everything at once click continue and then let's click OK but before clicking OK let's just check uh, some stuff related to the formatting so in terms of the language we want the output to be in English and in terms of the the charts even the tables we want them to be epa team times new roman okay click apply okay then let's go back here and click ok and wait for the output so these are the items these are the descriptive stats just to see that we don't have missing values we don't need to do cleaning because that what need to be done at the beginning an accurate way to 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 test the differences like to test the mean scores of or the median scores of two groups so in this regard the first 
aspect of this uh, research framework has been tested and we can write uh, two pages or I don't know how many words just describing the differences between male and female response with regard to readjustment and more specifically the 17 items of the readjustment scale right then we have student age so student age is a continuous variable so we can go for correlation and we can also go for simple uh, regression okay so let's go for let's say regression because regression consists of correlation anyway so we go to regression then linear then what so we move age to the independent list and we can move let's say one item to the dependent list like lately have been let's see which items we need to include like not being sleeping well recently for the options i can just keep this as it is for the plus i can put the predictor in the x-axis and the residual in the y-axis choose histogram for testing normality okay options keep them as they are and then click ok and see what will happen so for the regression so the model is statistically significant which is great according to the f statistics uh for the beta this is there is age so age negatively um has a negative impact of 0.4 percent let's say or four percent point uh, 4.4 percent on on let's say feeling sleepy or i have been i haven't been sleeping well lately but this one should be reverse coded because the majority of yeah so the majority of the respondents have not been sleeping well lately and this may have an impact on their academic adjustment but in terms of age like uh, it can be interpreted that the higher their age the more they sleep maybe so this can be an interpretation for 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 this one okay but but anyway linearity is not respected you can see that the data is let's say i don't know does not follow any linear uh what uh distribution uh okay so this is not good we cannot let's say can even do losses apply you see there is like no linear relationship the data is like scored so we cannot go for simple linear regression maybe we can use logistic regression or other tests but as i said um i was concerned mostly with with what with the correlation so the r square for the correlation was not computed yes this one so the r and the r squares there was a little bit uh there was correlation between age and even we can test this using correlation we can find that there may be a uh, correlation as we agreed so we have uh, age and i have not been feeling is permanent and you can see here minus 22 and this one minus 22 so not, so it wasn't here but but here the impact was negative so more or less the same results reflected by the regression so it's minus uh, 19 not 22 i don't know why he said 22 so this is for spearman okay uh, for person correlations minus 19 so here we have minus 90 this one so this is the r uh, that that is related to the correlation coefficient spearman correlation coefficient but this one is positive the other one is negative for the correlation signifying that there is a negative correlation between age and i haven't been sleeping well lately so this uh, second hypothesis here is tested and verified for the grades as well so since the grades are let's say continuous variable it can be analyzed using experimental person correlation or even regression to see whether or not there is any relationship whether it's positive negative or no or zero correlation between the two variables 
and if there is regression whether or not there is any impact of the predictor variable which is the grades on this case or in this case on the outcome variable which is readjustment or adjustment the same can be applied to motivation or attendance likely we want to see whether or not so instead of motivation so we can change this model a little bit depending on what we want to do exactly and depending on the results that show up during the process so this is like research process this is not like fixed model uh, so what, what we what we can do is the following we can just go back to i want to see whether those students who let's say do not attend or rarely or occasionally attend may not be uh, sleeping well like especially during the morning sessions so let's test this so i'm going to go to analyze and what so i can do this using different techniques i can go for the anova test to see the differences so i can go for compare means again or just compare means as we did and instead of gender i'm going to go for or choose what uh, so have you how often have you been attending okay so let's look for this question how often do you have the internet in what area do you live with your parents how often do you attend yes this one and i put it here so i keep the same values click ok okay no but this is really for me to have been feeling so, so there must be a problem here so what i can do again is i, is that I can go and do a uh, one way and over, and which I'm going to choose how often do you attend? Okay, I know the problem. The problem is that this item needs to be what? Coded. So, how often do you attend? Okay, so I'm going to code it just this way. I'll just label it this way. Because coding is very important. This is like the first step for this to work. Now it will work. So, let's do just compare me. Over here. No, again, it doesn't. There's something wrong with it. Now, let's try again if this works. But if we go back to it, we find that the type is string. This is a quantity, a qualitative variable. So I need to render it numeric. Okay, but I have to double check whether the data is still there. So it is still there, which is great. Now I can go to the compare means or just the means. How often do you turn? Click OK. Now it works, you see? So this is how we can go about it. But I can give these labels later. Uh, let's see the mean for each one so the higher this number the more students attend okay we were expecting that here five so let's see whether they always attend okay where is the so three this one is about sleeping late and they say agree nice so the agree the majority of them always attend regardless of whether they sleep early or late so this may not be an issue and we can even test this using ANOVA as I said so I can go for compare means I can go for um, one way ANOVA options so I can just keep this and click OK and visually see this. Like for the first item, I uh, mean of I haven't been sleeping well lately and still they attend. Really, that, but there are some cases that attend less often or never attend, even. See, so this is like how we can analyze this question or hypothesis. You see that we can run multiple tests to test more or less uh, the same thing so again we can go for compare means and we can do one way and over but instead of moving one item we can run different ANOVA tests even with post hoc tests to see the contrast or the mean differences between uh, different items so to speak so I can just go for post hoc and I choose this significant difference continue click ok mm, doesn't work uh, no no it works great so here we can find the p values where are they to so the mean scores so this is just descriptive we can find the sig value that is 
below 0 0.05 like this one is statistically significant i'm happy with my decision to study at my university along with attending so maybe that those people who do not attend may not be happy with their decision to study at my university so let's check this using descriptive stats so let me fill in down there. so this one you can see that those who do not attend may not have good mean scores so we have minus minus so two three four so four five so they attend so the majority of the respondents who let's say attend don't have problems with so they are happy with their decision to stand so this is the mean difference the mean trust or whatever it's called we can even Tested using, or rather, investigate this using means plots to see how this differs different uh, from one group to another. Like, okay, lately I have been feeling tense or nervous. Still, they attend. Still, they attend. Okay, on campus. I mean, so the majority of the respondents who took this questionnaire in brief attend, as you can see. That's why this attendance is high regardless of whatever we ask them you see so i think this is straightforward uh, this can be problem of voluntary sampling because when you just distribute questionnaire without using non-probability or rather probability techniques of sampling you may get voluntary sampling which may be a little bit biased because those who volunteer may be good students maybe so this is like one shortcomings of questionnaires but it can clearly be seen from from the analysis and can be reported of course in the limitation section because the study can be understood within a small scope it cannot be generalized so this is like how we can go about testing the different uh, dependent or independent variables in relationship to dependent variable using or variables using uh, different tests through Likert scales, of course. And if you have questions or remarks, do not hesitate to post them below. Contact me via one of my social media and see you soon in another tutorial. Bye for now.